Sony Cybershot DSC RX10 Roman 7 Review The Sony RX10 series represents the top tier of the point and shoot market. The seventh generation model, the Cybershot DSC RX10 Roman 7, sports the 8X lens introduced in its predecessor, along with an autofocus system that puts the camera on the same footing as the company's high end interchangeable lens models. It's a premium camera with a price match but backs it up with top-notch speed and optics. That earns it our editor's choice. Smartphone cameras continue to get better thanks to advancements in image processing computational photography, but there are some who simply prefer the feel of a dedicated camera in their hands or want a bit more zoom power than you get from a multi-lens iPhone. The RX10 Roman 7 offers plenty of zoom power, with a lens that matches a full-frame 24-200 in terms of coverage. It's longer than the 24-7-tim, designed using some others in the series, including the RX10VA, but only captures about half the light. If you want a similar camera with a bit of zoom and a brighter lens, consider the Canon G5X Mark Roman II, which has a 24-120-m phone 0.82.8 zoom, at 2.3 by 4.0 by 1.7 inches and 10.7 ounces, the RX10 Roman 7 isn't the lightest, Slim is compact out there, but it slides into jacket pockets easily, and its weight comes from complex optics and construction that's more metal than plastic. It doesn't have any sort of protruding hand grip, but there are first and third party add on grips available for photographers who prefer one. You'll still want to take care when using it, the camera isn't rugged or waterproof. Sony's larger bridge style, RX10 series, offers dust and splash protection, but true rugged options are few and far between if you want one with an image sensor that's bigger than your smartphone. Sea Life sells a 1-inch waterproof model, the DC2000, but it doesn't have a zoom lens, and its functions are downright primitive in comparison. Sony may churn out RX10 after RX10 year after year, but it hasn't done a lot to change the basic design and layout of controls since it launched the series. For more on the differences between each model, refer to our RX10 buying guide. There's a freely turning control ring around the lens you can configure it for various functions. But I like using it for EV compensation. It's joined by the typical zoom rocker switch, shutter release, mode dial, and on or off button on the top, with the remainder of the controls on the rear. To the right of the tilting display, there are rear buttons to start and stop videos, access the on-screen FN menu, and more extensive text-based menu system, and to play and delete photos. They are joined by a flat command dial with directional presses that adjust the flash output, drive mode, and EV compensation. Touch input works well. You can tap the screen to select a focus point or subject for tracking when capturing images or video. But there are limitations you can navigate menus via touch. Nor can you use the screen as a touch control for focus when using the EVF. Some of Sony's competitors, including rival Canon with its G5 and G7 compact camera series, include this feature, often referred to as touchpad autofocus. The RX10 feels a bit more pro thanks to the inclusion of an eye-level viewfinder. Hidden in the body, it pops out via mechanical release and, unlike some older designs, is ready to use without having to lock its eye cup in place. The OLED finder isn't as large as you will get on a mirrorless camera but its 0.59x magnification rating still gives you a good view of your frame. 